Hi, I'm Sue with today's Bible reading for February 9th. I'm reading Leviticus 24 and 25 from the World English Bible. Verse 1. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring to you pure olive oil, beaten, for the light, to cause a lamp to burn continually. Outside of the veil of the testimony in the tent of meeting, Aaron shall keep it in order from evening to morning before Yahweh continually. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. He shall keep in order the lamps on the pure gold lampstand before Yahweh continually. So right off the bat, let's just stop and ponder that for a minute. You know, much of Leviticus is just kind of minutia, kind of dull details. And some of them get more interesting the more you know about uh, the Bible and depending on what you're trying to research about it. I'm sure some of the, the things that we've read about the building of the tabernacle are really interesting to builders where it would not necessarily be to someone else. But parts like this with the light, I find really interesting. Um, it was a light outside the veil. What does light represent? So one of the things light represents, and I believe here particularly, is the presence of God. The presence was inside the veil, though. This was outside of the veil. So in just in just meditating on this concept, um, you could say that that light was leading the way to the presence of God, kind of like shining a light on that path, right? The Bible says the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So we have this light. It's, we, the Bible also talks about the light of truth and the word of God is truth, right? So you have this, this light showing the way, leading the way into the presence of God, which is one of the themes of Leviticus, God dwelling with the people, his presence being with them. And then it says continually, which speaks to the faithfulness of God, the continuity of God's presence. Um, Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, right? God is light and purity. And the absence of light is darkness. It'd be the absence of him is the absence of love, pure darkness, which is hell, right? And I don't mean figuratively, I mean literally. So there's a lot that you could read into this continuous burning of the lamp inside the tabernacle and later on the temple. And there's actually more to that. There's another story. Um um, the miracle story of the lamps that never went out that miraculously burned we'll talk about that another time verse five you shall take fine flour and bake 12 cakes of it two tenths of an ephah shall be in one cake you shall set them in two rows six on a row on the pure gold table before yahweh you shall put frankincense on each row that it may be to the bread for a memorial even an offering made by fire to yahweh every sabbath day he shall set it in order before yahweh continually so now you have more symbolism with this showbread that's that's in the tabernacle, on the table, continually, and maintained by the priests. It shall be for Aaron and his sons. They shall eat it in a holy place, for it is most holy to him, of the offerings of Yahweh made by fire for a perpetual state. The son of an Israelite woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the children of Israel. And the son of an Israelite woman and a man of Israel strove together in the camp. The son of the Israelite woman blasphemed the name and cursed, and they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shelemith, the daughter of Dibri, of the tribe of Dan. They put him in custody until Yahweh's will should be declared to them. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Bring him who cursed out of the camp, and let all who heard him lay their hands on his head, and let all the con congregation stone him. You shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, Whoever curses his God shall bear his sin. He who blasphemes Yahweh's name, he shall surely be put to death. Now, we don't take people out and stone them today, but may I purport that this kind of cursing, cursing God, blaspheming God, brings a curse on yourself and potentially to the, to the children, to the family? Thank God Jesus died to reverse these curses when we accept it by faith. Amen. Verse 16. He who blasphemes Yahweh's name shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall certainly stone him. The foreigner as well as the native born shall be put to death when he blasphemes the name. So apparently here there was no, there was no recourse. There was no repentance. No remission of this sin. So I don't fully understand that. Maybe somebody can explain that to me better. But for sure they cursed God and blasphemed and they were stoned. 
today we have the opportunity for repentance if we don't harden our heart to the point of you know no return verse 17 he who strikes any man mortally shall be put to death he who strikes an animal mortally shall make it good life for life if anyone injures his neighbor it shall be done to him as he has done fracture for fracture eye for eye tooth for tooth it shall be done to him as he has injured someone he who kills an animal shall make it good and he who kills a man shall be put to death you shall have one kind of law for the foreigner as well as the native born for i am yahweh your god moses spoke to the children of israel and they brought him who had cursed out of the camp and stoned him with stones the children of israel did as yahweh commanded moses yahweh said to moses on mount sinai speak to the children of israel and tell them when you come into the land which i give you then the land shall keep a sabbath to yahweh you shall sow your field six years and you shall prune your vineyard six years and gather in its fruits but in the seventh year there shall be a sabbath of solemn rest for the land a sabbath to yahweh you shall not sow your field or prune your vineyard what grows of itself in your harvest you shall not reap you shall not gather the grapes of your undressed vine it shall be a year of solemn rest for the land the sabbath of the land shall be for food for you for yourself for your servant and your maid for your hired servant and for your stranger who lives with you as a foreigner for you your livestock also and for the animals that are in your land shall all its increase be for food verse 8 you shall count off seven sabbaths of years seven times seven years and there shall be to you the days of seven sabbaths of years even 49 years then you shall sound the loud trumpet on the tenth day of the seventh month on the day of atonement you shall sound the trumpet throughout your land you shall make the fiftieth year holy and this is the jubilee you shall make the fiftieth year holy and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants it shall be a jubilee to you and each of you shall return to his own property and each of you shall return to his family that fiftieth year shall be a jubilee to you in it you shall not sow neither reap that which grows of itself nor gather from the undressed vines for it is a jubilee it shall be holy to you you shall eat of its increase out of the field in this year of jubilee each of you shall return to his property if you sell anything to your neighbor or buy from your neighbor you shall not wrong one another according to the number of years after the jubilee you shall buy from your neighbor according to the number of years of the crops he shall sell to you according to the length of the years you shall increase its price and according to the shortness of the years you shall diminish its price for he is selling the number of crops to you you shall not wrong one another but you shall fear your god for i am yahweh your god therefore you shall do my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them and you shall dwell in the land in safety the land shall yield its fruit and you shall eat your fill and dwell therein in safety if you said what shall we eat the seventh year behold we shall not sow nor gather in our increase then i will command my blessing on you in the sixth year and it shall bear fruit for the three years <clears throat> three years okay the year the sixth year then the sabbath year and then i guess the jubilee year as well wow you shall sow the eighth year and eat of the fruits from the old store until the ninth year until its fruits come in you shall eat the old store the land shall not be sold in perpetuity for the land is mine for you are strangers and live as foreigners with me in all the land of your possession you shall grant a redemption for the land if your brother becomes poor and sells some of his possessions then his kinsman his kinsman who is next to him shall come and redeem that which his brother has sold if a man has no one to redeem it and he becomes prosperous and finds sufficient means to redeem it then let him reckon the years since its sale and restore the surplus to the man whom he sold it and he shall return to his property but if he is unable to get it back for himself then what he has sold shall remain in the hand of him who has bought it until the year of jubilee in the year of jubilee it shall be released and he shall return to his property if a man sells a dwelling house in a walled city then he may redeem it within a whole year after it has been sold for a full year he shall have the right of redemption if it isn't redeemed within the space of a full year then the house that is in the walled city shall be made sure in perpetuity to him who bought it throughout his generations it shall not be released in the jubilee but the houses of the villages which have no wall around them shall be accounted for with the fields of the country they may be redeemed and they shall be released in the jubilee okay now that makes sense to me because in the walled city i guess they'd be kind of like apartments or something i mean you, you don't really have any land you have that footprint of your little walled space whereas out in the country you have some land and there happens to be a house on it see he said he said that house will be included in the land how did it put it it said the one with no wall around them shall be accounted for with the fields of the country 
they may be redeemed. So perhaps that's why I'm just thinking out loud. But, you know, how could you? In other words, the, the little apartment in the city is not really land. It's part of a building. So I don't know. Just thinking out loud. Verse 32. Nevertheless, in the cities of the Levites, the Levites may redeem the houses in the cities of their possession at any time. The Levites may redeem the house that was sold in the city of its possession, and it shall be released in the Jubilee. For the houses of the cities of the Levites are their possession among the children of Israel. But the field of the pasture lands of their cities may not be sold, for it is their perpetual possession. Okay, I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> I get a little bit more every time I read this, but I still don't understand it fully. You have to really have a good teacher and look into the history and the records. Verse 35. If your brother has become poor and his hand can support himself among you, then you shall uphold him. He shall live with you like an alien and a temporary resident. Take no interest from him or profit, but fear your God that your brother may live among you. You shall not lend him your money at interest, nor give him your food for profit. I am Yahweh, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. If your brother has grown poor among you and sells himself to you, you shall not make him serve as a slave, as a hired servant, and as a temporary resident. He shall be with you. He shall serve with you until the year of Jubilee. Then he shall go out from you, he and his children with him, and shall return to his own family and to the possession of his fathers. For they are my servants whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as slaves. You shall not rule over him with harshness, but shall fear your God. As your male and your female slaves, whom you may have from the nations that are around you, from them you may buy male and female slaves. Moreover, of the children of the aliens who live among you, of them you may buy, and of their families who are with you, which they have conceived in your land, and they will be your property. You may make them an inheritance for your children after you, to hold for a possession. Of them you may take your slaves forever, but over your brothers, the children of Israel, you shall not rule, one over another, with harshness. If an alien or temporary resident with you becomes rich, and your brother beside him has grown poor, and sells himself to the stranger or foreigner living among you, or to a member of the stranger's family, after he is sold he may be redeemed. One of his brothers may redeem him, or his uncle, or his uncle's son may redeem him, or any who is a close relative to him of his family may redeem him, or if he has grown rich he may redeem himself. He shall reckon with him who bought him from the year that he sold himself to him to the year of Jubilee. The price of the sale shall be according to the number of years. He shall be with him according to the time of a hired servant. Now, I didn't say this earlier, but... <clears throat> I was taught at one time about some of this, how they count the years, like if they, if it's in the middle of the Jubilee, the 50 years, and you sold your property, and then the Jubilee comes up again, you count how many years that it had been sold. You know, they use that to determine how much is, how much they can redeem it for. I'm sure that was kind of clear but, but, but by reading this, but just in case. Um. That's why it, it says the price of his sale shall be according to the number of years. He shall be with him according to the time of a hired servant. If there are yet many years, according to them, he shall give back the price of his redemption out of the money that he was bought for. If there remain but a few years to the year of Jubilee, then he shall reckon with him. According to his years of service, he shall give back the price of his redemption. As a servant hired year by year, shall he be with him. He shall not rule with harshness over him in your sight. If he isn't redeemed by these means, then he shall be released in the year of Jubilee, he and his children with him. For to me, the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh, your God. That's it for today's reading. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow.